Hi, kids. How are you? Hi. Well, first of all, congratulations on Squealer. It's uh, it's put me off of bacon. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. We'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think so. I need to stop. Um, <laughs> Danielle, first of all, uh, uh, your journey has been one of just, you know, wonderful steps. I mean, from from Broadway to doing stunts and, and now producing in Rise. You're going from the bright lights of Broadway to a dim lit writer's gear. There are horror movies. Yeah, and horror movies. How How does that all happen? Uh, one, one day at a time, <laughs> one day at a time. I think, you know, somewhere I, I've always just gone with where life has taken me. Uh, dancing was something that just came easy. Stunts was something I never thought in a million years I would get into, but opportunity knocked and I answered and that was that. And all along the way, I've met incredible filmmakers. I've learned so much. I've been on so many sets. And I realize no matter what I'm doing, at the end of the day, my real love is storytelling. And so whether that's as an actor, a, a dancer, a stunt person, a writer, a producer, it's um, I just love telling stories. So it feels to me like a pretty natural progression. And um, and this is my first, I've done a couple of shorts, but this is my first feature as a wow. writer producer. So I'm very excited and I'm very proud and um, grateful to Andy because he's been the most incredible mentor. I couldn't ask for anyone better to, to get me here. I could not have, I, I would not be here without him. He's helped me tremendously. So yeah, and, and of course, speaking of amazing storytellers, Andy Armstrong is with us. And uh, you know, in in putting all this together, I mean, doing horror films is is one thing, but keeping the audience involved in and on the edge of their seat is 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 another thing. Did you did you have a passion for horror thrillers from the time you were a kid? Absolutely not. Actually, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 they terrify me. Uh, horror movies I, I find it hard to to go through them but I I I realized that this story was something that uh, it, it was a sort of natural horror and it seemed it's sort of it's a story that told itself really and um and we felt that it, although both of us are, neither of us are sort of a, a horror aficionado so we, we both wanted to uh do this story though and it it sort of the, the story became a horror because it, it is a horror but it was not it was not sort of we didn't set out to go oh we, we want to do a horror movie it just it was just a fascinating story that is horrific um so yeah it's uh I'd done a few horror movies as a assistant director and done stunts and things on them but uh but I uh I was always fascinated by them, but uh, but they I, they're not something I normally watch purely because they scare me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danielle, in in putting this, I mean, this is based on a true story. How did that true story land in your laps? So um, many many years ago, Andy was um, just slightly involved with the documentary. He was uh, his friend asked him to come help set up some some of the actual scenes he's going to describe he's going to tell that better than I'm telling it right now but he he mentioned the story to me and he and I had been wanting to work together as a writing producing partners um but life took us in different directions so it was about seven years before we circled back around and finally said okay we're going to do it we're going to sit down we're going to make a movie together uh, and he looked at me and he said, okay, what should we write? <laughs> and I said, do you remember that story about the pig farmer turned serial killer? I, I had not stopped thinking about it for like seven years. Um, and so that was it. That was, that was a really easy place to start. Um, and the story, the true story itself has, you know, so, so much, uh, horror and power and juice to it that that was that was a good place to build some building blocks but we didn't want to just tell a true story we wanted to just use it as inspiration um so this squealer is actually a bit of a hybrid we definitely put our storytelling hats on and weaved a lot of fiction into there so um 
hopefully there's enough of the truth in there that the true crime audience will be satisfied <laughs> and enough of the other that the horror audience will also be satisfied. We really wanted to be respectful to any potential victims or families that yeah. might still be around. And we, we wanted to be a bit careful about trying to actually tell the true story. So we'll leave that one to the true crime podcasts. And uh, we just stole some of the inspiration. Andy, is is there a rhythm or a, a cadence to filming a horror movie? Um, well, one one thing, one key element that I, I felt all the horror films that I had seen that had worked really well seemed to work because they were quite lean, uh, cheap, and sort of scruffy in a funny sort of way. And, and the moment people try to sort of make horror films that are polished and, and refined and have a sort of big studio feel, they, in my opinion, they fail. Mm -hmm. So we, we were very, we were very sort of uh, aware that we wanted to make this feel like a sort of vintage horror, you know, where it was, uh, it was something that could happen to anybody and it can, and it, I didn't want to make anything that was uh, overly flamboyant or, you know, flashy locations or anything. I just wanted it set in a beautiful place because the real one was in Vancouver. We shot in New Mexico, but it it's, they're both places that have beautiful land, beautiful horizons everywhere. Um, and for me, that was one of the key elements to make this, this darkness and really terrifying tale but it happens in a beautiful place and it's a lot of it's at daylight not not at night and so um it, it sort of it sort of grew itself once we we set these sort of parameters for it you know we wanted to do a lot in the daytime we wanted to do a, a lot in one place we wanted a, a beautiful landscape uh and the rest sort of fell into place it was a it was a, a very interesting process actually making this movie it was a very it was fun and it was uh, a lot of it just happened on its own great actors that all brought something to it uh all of them brought something yeah. that I did I, I I don't want to interrupt you but I did want to mention Tyrese is is wonderful in this as is Sydney uh Carvel what what great performances you got out of your actors yeah I mean I'm happy with everybody Everybody in it. We didn't have Tyrese for very long. Um, literally, it was two days or something. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not something that he would normally fit into in a, in a funny sort of way. But I, I, once we started assembling the picture, I was, I was actually really pleasantly surprised that he's actually very charismatic in it. And he's, uh, he fulfills the role... Perfectly. I mean, when I first spoke to him, when he was showed some interest in it, I uh, I was very clear that I didn't want I, I didn't want him to be a, to come off as a hero. You know, I, I, it was really important to me that the the real story, uh, a, a lot of the reason it exists, is because of a certain amount of apathy by the police because they they didn't just didn't care enough. And uh, so I wanted him to represent, you know, represent that part of the police, but without bashing you over the head with it. And actually, he does it very well. And he's, uh, yeah, I think he comes out of the movie very, very well. I was actually very, very pleased with, the, you know, the, what we ended up with with him. It's, uh, and I think, I think he'll be, I don't know how much of it he's seen, but I think he'll be pleased as well. It's a, it's a good performance by him. It is a great performance by him. Yeah. Dan Danielle, what do you think audiences are going to take away from watching Squealer? Well, I hope that they are going to go on a very intense emotional ride and feel a whole rainbow of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot that we're intending to take them through. So um, I hope the adrenaline is there. I hope they... I hope they care for these characters. Um, and I hope that the, you know, there is a subtle thread of the social commentary that we 
have infused, and I hope that will really come through about some of these uh, some of these women that were victims, and just because of their social status or their profession, some of the sex workers, or if they happen to be addicted to drugs, um, many times in life they're sort of brushed aside. And um, that's something that Andy and I are very passionate about that, you know, we are all equal and everyone deserves the same, same amount of attention. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, in the real story, this killer went on for quite a long time because he was focusing on people who maybe didn't have families or people looking out for them as much. So I hope that that will come through and, and resonate with some people and maybe bring a little bit more awareness and a little bit more compassion. Um, and then I hope that they, I hope that they just enjoy the film from whether they're the true crime uh, mm. fans or the horror films that, that it will satisfy them and whatever, for whatever reason they like to come to these kind of movies. I hope that they will be satisfied. <laughs> well, it's a nice mix of genres. So it's, it really does a great, a great job in doing both. Uh, final question in our interview, Andy, are you and Danielle working on other projects together yes. now? Yeah, we have several other other projects. We have two, actually almost three that are almost ready to go now, but we can't pitch anything because of the strike. So we're, mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're getting those as complete as we can. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely be doing some other stuff together, different, different genre, but, uh, but the same sort of approach i think uh, by accident or design our approach to making this movie worked really well for us and you know worked well with the actors and it was a good process so we're going to we're going to build on that with our next project yeah i would imagine that working with each other I'll take a cue from danielle is like a dance you have to absolutely. learn the steps absolutely and it's, it's important to know true. to know that the quality is the other person bring so that you don't have to go there you know you can concentrate on this this and this and that person concentrates on that and it's a it's a very good working process very good danielle and and andy i want to thank you for your time wow i appreciate it and congratulations on squealers uh, on squealer it's it's really very very nail-biting and shocking and and uh wonderfully wonderfully produced and, and directed so thank you both Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye.